Hey, what's going on, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And as usual, we have yet another amazing guest. One of my, uh, just one of my all-time faves. Uh, let's get this show right on the road. I'm really excited to catch up with this guy, Mr. The Man, The Myth, The Legend, Judd Albring. What's up, Judd? Welcome to the show, brother. How are you, man? Good morning. Thank you so much. Returning am... mastermind speaker, upcoming mastermind speaker in Austin, secret YouTube ninja, commission, <laughs> you know, just master, uh, all around great family guy, Chicago native, uh, and we're going to learn what else you are and aren't on the show but yeah how the heck are you how you doing in chicago what's up long time no speak excited as hell to have you in austin just good to see you buddy yeah thank you so much yeah i'm thrilled uh thrilled to be back and always good to um to uh reconnect and i you, joanne and i were talking a little bit before it came on we were talking about um you know that how how uh being an online entrepreneur or digital entrepreneur, whatever you want to call yourself, mm. it gets freaking lonely sometimes, you know? Mm. And uh, she was saying, how are things going? I was like, you know, it's great. Everything's great, but I'm busy. But then at the same time, I'm not busy because I've got the kids and things going on and I've got my channel, but then there's this time. Sometimes you, you have these pockets of time where you're kind of like, do I make more content? Do I do more stuff? What do I do? So, do I nurture my social life? Do I, yeah. you know, actually, right, do something about being a weird, awkward, lonely, yeah, marketer? Yeah, ah, let's just keep making money, right? Or do I just do I just take a nap? You know, it's <laughs> like or have a half a gallon of ice cream, right? Um, but because uh, I I was thinking, you know, when we were talking, I was like, well, I've been doing this for seven years now. Um, and I think, you know, you know, I think you and I officially met, what was it two, maybe three years ago? Um, even though, you know, I had, had known, known you through the community and things like that over the years, but, you know, time flies and it's, uh, you know, even though, even though I've been on YouTube so long, it's like, just when I think I'm an expert, something changes. Mm you know yeah. and not only that but the more this industry grows you know when you look at the numbers and you look at the e-learning industry and you look at how things are just exploding year after year after year well guess what that brings on more people in into this business and there's mm. more people on youtube and all these places so um you know it's you gotta you gotta every year you're kind of starting it feels like you're starting over because there's like something new you got to learn <laughs> yeah i agree man it's never a dull moment i mean you're certainly you know there's 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 you're mentioning pros and cons as we kick the show off right you you've got a seven-year marketing vet you know you all are uh, you know able to be a fly on the wall for this conversation and, and all of these uh, conversations are impromptu, by the way, everybody, in case you're logging on, wondering, listening, you know, just just a lot of times it's me, somebody who's been doing this for 15 years, interviewing somebody who's in their first year. In this case, this morning, Judd has and let's put Judd. We're going to talk about your YouTube channel, how you let's put his YouTube channel up on the screen. I'm a little limited here. I'm uh, still without Wi-Fi. I'm just on my phone. I'm using, you know, my data plan. Uh, we went through the hurricanes down here recently in Florida, so I'm I'm a little bit limited. But um, so we'll talk about your your YouTube. Uh, but you know, just going back to what you're talking about here, uh, you know, just kind of cool to think of yourself as a fly on the wall today, listening to this impromptu conversation about kind of what it's like you've started the show naming some cons like some downsides there are legitimate downsides of of this and uh then there's lots of pros you've mentioned some of the pros some of the downsides though going back to your comment earlier about you know it being lonely and uh which i know you're kind of half jokingly when you say that yeah. because the truth is man is that you know uh 
at, at, at our age, you know, in kind of, I know your personality, you're a little bit like me too. We like to have fun, but we also like our solitude. You know, we kind mm-hmm. of like being, you know, kind of weird hermit internet marketers, you know, for me, I like my privacy. I like my, I'm kind of a introvert, even though I have an extroverted ability to, you know, to be, to party, to have fun, to be, to, to be social. I also like my, my solitude. And I think you are like that as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and there's certainly always with more money and more time freedom, you got all the time and ability in the world to evolve your social life and to, and to, you know, have a, a better quality of life. But this business changed your life seven years ago. How and what was the reason why you decided to uh, take this this on in in pursue internet marketing? Yeah, for sure. And and piggy, what you were just saying about pros and cons, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. That that is for sure. Um, and but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that you know I. So I'm 52. So I kind of, I I think I was probably in my mid forties. I mean, I pretty much got started late in life with everything. I, um, you know, I got married at 40 kids at 42, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, all my, my friends, kids are getting married now and, and I've got a 10 and and an eight year old. So, um, but, um, I was having a real hard time finding work. I spent a lot. I don't know if I've ever talked about this. A lot of people don't know this, but I spent most of my career in luxury retail. So I was, I was selling suits and all that kind of stuff. And I actually also worked as a manager at the Ralph Lauren here in Chicago, which is the world's largest retail, uh, Ralph Lauren retail. So if you've ever been to Chicago and gone to that store, it's like four stories high. Mm. So I've always been in the kind of customer service sales. I've always needed to be in something that I could use my personality. Well, I got laid off and I tried to do, tried to get some other jobs, other places. And I kind of just said, you know what, I'm just going to do my own thing. And I started, um, I actually was practicing yoga a lot and I started my own yoga studio. Well, let me tell you, (laughs) It sounds like a great relaxing job because you hear the word yoga, but it is, oh. it is anything but that. And just because you like yoga doesn't mean you should open a yoga studio. Do you know what I mean? Just, just because you like to cook doesn't mean you should open a restaurant. So I learned the hard way with that. And, um, but I've always had that kind of entrepreneurial bug. Hmm. So, my wife's like, you got to figure this out. Cause we got a, we got a little one in the house now. You just, you know, and I was driving for Uber at night and I was cleaning windows on the weekends. I was basically just doing anything I could to make money while I was figuring my life out. You know what I mean? And I was the stay at home dad because we couldn't afford to pay the sitter, the sitter. We were paying the sitter more than what I was bringing in. And my wife let me get, get away with that for about six months or so. Then she's like, we got to, we got to kick it up a notch here. And I said, you know what, let me start looking for other ways to bring in money where I can still be home. And I did, you know what I mean? Where I can be home with the kids, but I don't have to leave at night and blah, blah, blah. And like, (laughs) and like most people, I went online and started searching for ways to make money from home. You know, how can I make money online? Well, I tried a Facebook ad agency where I would call into small businesses and say I'd run ads for them. That was a nightmare. My buddy and I tried tried selling restaurant parts on Amazon FBA, but shipping a 20-pound motor only pays you about 20 cents when you sell it because you pay for that. I tried mm-hmm. on-demand printing, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And... I'll skip to the good part. I came across a uh, a uh, a guy who was doing digital marketing, affiliate marketing, <clears throat> and I went out to a funnel hacking live event and met him there. And 
I had no idea what digital marketing was, what affiliate marketing was like, what any of that kind of stuff was like how to create a digital product. None of that. And got really close with him and started learning about this business and how to do it. And, and real quick, the funnel hacking live, I literally had to, my wife, I had to like beg my wife. I'm like, I got to go to this thing. And I couldn't afford to stay at the hotel that funnel hacking live was at. I had to stay at a motel down the street and then walk to the event every day but it changed my life and that was that was actually in Tennessee and that was kind of my intro into this world and when I was at this event I met people who were creating um, digital courses on how to play piano there were people who were were doing membership sites for new mothers who were uh, you know, stressed and exhausted and things like that. Uh, there were people who were creating, um, there was a guy who had a, a whole program on how to build a chicken coop in your backyard. You know, there were nonprofits there. There were churches there. I mean, there was every type of person there with an idea, right? And Ooh. they just wanted to know, how can I take what's up here and put it into the digital form so I can have more freedom and be with my family? You know, and it's funny because just about everybody had the same why. Well, I want to be home. I want to be with my family more. I mean, they're really 99% of the people. That's what they wanted. And that was that was my intro into the world. And, you know, um, and, and, you know, the first two years I was really plugging away, plugging away. And then um, it was kind of like year two where I really hit it full time and and my YouTube channel. And that's just when everything really started to take off. Um, but you know, it just so happens that you're, you know, going to be coming back speaking at our next upcoming Austin mastermind, similar to how you just mentioned going to an event and it being sort of a kickoff of your career. Yeah. Events are powerful. Um, again, we met having you come out, uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a, at an event two years ago or something like that speak and uh it was a great time you know sometimes part of that cure going back to something that you said at the beginning of the show which is that entrepreneurship can be lonely sometimes especially internet marketing when you're working from home come out to an event you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll i believe can we get that up on the screen just so people can grab a ticket to that if you want to come to that austin mastermind it's going to be a great time and I have to say that going to events like over the years that have been, those have been some of the most impactful experiences that I've had as well, mm -hmm. you know, going to an event, just meeting people. I think it's not just, you know, what you learn. It's also just looking at people who are your idols and realizing that they put their pants on the same way that you do, but, but actually seeing it, like you don't believe it until you actually see them standing there and they like scratch their butt or something. And you're like, Damn, yeah. that person's a human being. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I damn. think and you made a good point um, about how powerful events can be. Even when um, I spoke to Joanne a couple of weeks ago, like about when I committed to the event, I said, yeah, you know, it works. I can come out there. It lit a fire in me that I needed, you know? So now I've got, this to look forward to that I'm going to, I'm going to be able to, yes, I'm going to see some old friends, but the, the best part is being able to sit down and talk with all these people who are coming. Right. And, and answer questions. And like you said, just be a normal dude person. And we all put our pants on the same time, but I remember how powerful it was when I sat down uh, and had lunch with a bunch of these, you know, random strangers at this event and they and asking them questions just like we are right now. How did you get started? What did you do? How did you hear about it? It just mm -hmm. gave it gave me that okay, I'm in the right place. I'm mm -hmm. doing the right thing. I can't, you know, I can do this because I met another 40 something dad, or I yeah. met another uh 30 something mom or whatever. Yeah. And it gives you a chance to meet other people who also bought which are either your customers or people who are like your customers and just kind of talk to, to that person who is your, your ideal customer. 
which can be invaluable research, like all the psychology courses, whatever you want to take on how to narrow down and understand in the most kind of, you know, primal way, just, just, just clearest way who your target customer is, come to an event and talk to people. You'll see common patterns amongst people, the way that people think or the way that they talk or language that they use. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to take that back. That could be one of the, you could have a takeaway at an event that you never, I guarantee you it'll be different than what you expect it's going to be. You, you'll expect that it's going to be something I'm going to write. I'm going to write it down. No, it's going to be a conversation that happens where somebody says something and it like something clicks for you. For example, oh, that's what my target customer. That's how they view this. Just like you said, that little nugget that you just gave mm-hmm. away a moment ago could have been a huge light bulb for people this morning, which was the comment about. Everybody just wants more time, more free time, more time with their family. You know, that 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 was an example of a nugget. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, the, but we're just here. This is just a live podcast show that being around people for three days. It And I've now done this. I mean, it, I've grown. I've grown. Mm-hmm. I mean, doing these 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 events that we do now, I, I was I've been involved in much larger events in the past, done events for two, three, four thousand people. However, the events that we do here at Legendary between 100 and 150 people, you you get a chance to, there's a a lot of people, so a lot of ideas and a lot of energy, but not too many to where you get lost or hide in a sea. You can connect with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the last one that we did, we were in New Orleans. Uh, Again, this coming January, we're going to be in Austin. And if you want to come to that event, you can meet Judd, hang out with all of us, learn, experience all the stuff that we're talking about. Go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. And on that page, you'll see our three main offerings, which is our challenge, uh, our blueprints, and our mastermind event. And you can lock in a ticket before they run out. Um, right now, there are some seats that are available for that event. But this is just, uh, it's kind of one of those things where you got to be there. And then once you know, you know, you know, it's, but, mm-hmm. but until you've experienced coming out in, in, in actually being around some baller ass marketers, I mean, I don't know how else to sell it, say this, you know, so, and t- until you've come out and been around some smart baller marketers who, know, who just are living this life in this lifestyle and are, and are a, a detached from one of the most powerful things is the, the, the energy and the approach and the mindset to life in a room full of people who are somewhat detached from everyday living in the, in the matrix, if you will, in the system of plugging and chugging away gas into your gas tank, driving 30 minutes into the office, you know, and just that whole kind of nine to five hamster wheel. Everybody in that room, whether it be the, the team from Legendary, certainly guest speakers, top marketers in the room, people are, you know, they are living on their own terms. They do have their own. They do have the, the time with their family. They do have the flexibility. And so there's just you're going to get different ideas and hear people talking in different ways than you know. And that's going to become something that you're now going to chase so now you're not just chasing the money that you don't you you know that's just oh i want a million dollars i want okay but now you're chasing energy too you're chasing oh wow this can really be a lifestyle i can i'd like to surround myself with these kind of people that think like this instead Mm -hmm. of the typical people that i hang out with that we just compare our how hard our life is and as if it's a notch on the belt like addicted to struggle well, yeah, these gas prices and these grocery prices and this politician and that ball and all the same bullshit that people normally talk about and mm-hmm. complain about, but do nothing <clears throat> about, right? It's kind of a vibe, right? That, that also you pick up on. And, and I, I would think that you experienced that too. Uh, what comes up for you as I talk about this? Yeah, I think you said something that, um, something huge. What did you say? Um, oh, talking about 
it's not just picking up the nuggets here and there, but it's the energy. Um, and you know, that's what I love about being, being able to speak, being able to do things like this is my old positions. And when I worked nine to five, I went to work and when work was done, I went home. You know, nobody was asking me to participate in any kind of event. Nobody was recognizing me really for my work. What what we had a pizza party every quarter or something. That was about it. So like these live events are just it's more than than it's more than the uh like you said, the the money side, right? You everybody starts a business to want to make money. I mean, that's just what it is, whether it's an online business, offline business. But I think the the end goal, the life that that we have and that we're able to live doing this business, Dave's in his kitchen. I'm in my studio I built in my basement. My son's mm. up my son is upstairs because I let him play hooky today because it's his birthday. And after this interview, I'm gonna take him shopping. And then we're gonna go in the middle of the day at one o'clock and sit in a movie theater and watch the new Lego movie. Mm. And it's and it's it's Tuesday, guys. And that's what I get to do today. And I'm not, and that's not to brag or boast. It's just to say that is the life that I can do. And Thursday I'm going, I'm going down to the kid's school all day for a Halloween party. Um, that's, that's the great thing about this, but not to get off track. Dave's talking about the energy, you know, one of, we were talking about pros and cons in the beginning and, and you are your own boss and you have to be able to give yourself a kick in the butt. That's why live events like the, the legendary mastermind are so important because it gives you that kick in the butt that you need. It gives you that sense of belonging. It gives you that, Hey, there's people, these are my people. They're just like me, mm -hmm. right? I'm not the only one. And lastly, is, you know, you'll take, I'm, I'm a total note taker, you know, I'll take notes and write all this stuff down. And guess what? I will never read a freaking line of those notes. You're right. I'll be like, Ooh, that's good. I got I got to remember this. But like Dave said, what I will remember is the conversation I had while we were all drinking coffee in between sessions at the mastermind. I'll remember that conversation I had with that one person who was, um, really talented uh, with Instagram reels. And I'll remember that little nugget she gave me or he gave me. And then at night when everybody else has gone to bed and a couple of us are just sitting around in the lobby chatting, I'll remember those conversations and what those people told me about uh, storytelling and email automation and things like that. That's the stuff I'm going to remember. And also those are the relationships that I'm going to, that I'm going to have forever mm. because now if I get stuck three or four months from now, I know I can message, uh, I can message Bob from Louisiana who I met at that mastermind and ask him a question. I'm not mm. alone anymore. Right. I've put a name with a face. So there's just so much you get from that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just knowing somebody. Having one good friend, I mean, I think as we get older, I as I've gotten older, I've realized I don't need to have 50 friends. I need to have a couple of friends. And you make one good connection, you're fine. You're good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you made one friend, right, one friend that can, you know, I think even just the therapeutic community value, if we just talk about your damn mental health, the therapeutic value of just knowing somebody and be able to, being able to process your experience and your thoughts with one other person that you have some context and, and connection with because you met them at an event, you did a similar thing. I'm telling you, I know people who some of, some of their best friends they met through coaching programs or through personal development seminar type programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are like-minded people. These people, these are people that are looking, searching, hunting for more out of life. These are good people to know at the very least, you know, that this person is working on themselves. They're trying new things. They're probably a positive person. 
you know, th- this is this is an example of a place that you go to meet good quality people. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the 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 ticket price that we charge for these mastermind upgrades is 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 ridiculously low. It's only a couple of thousand bucks for for an upgrade. Um, it's it's you know, there's 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 uh lots of companies in the education space that for a three day mastermind, it's, it's, it, it could be, uh, five figures, you know, 10, 15, $20,000. Um, I've seen them go for more, um, it, you know, so it, 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 then because knowledge is, is, is valuable and that experience is valuable, not to mention all the, all the little details in terms of how we host our events uh, you know, food, et cetera, just details, dances, parties, all that good stuff. Um, it's also about just all the attention, all the knowledge, all the experience and the opportunity for you to do as much or as little as you want with that. When you get there, let's transition uh, a little bit. Um, again, for more information about what we were just talking about, go to legendary marketer.com forward slash enroll. E N R O L L. Um, those are our sponsors on the show. See, that's the beautiful thing, friends. Um, you know, you, you, one of the things that I hate most about, uh, about, um, some of my favorite shows, uh, that I watch, for example, on YouTube, you've got to sit there and you've got to listen to five or 10 minutes in some, it's unbelievable of sponsored ads, right? Where they just, they read off of a See, I don't do that. We don't run that business model here. We don't teach that business model. What we're doing is selling our own information products. Isn't this fascinating? This is why I'm giving these calls to action and educating and why we do this show. And because we have an opportunity to promote our own programs, which we believe in, or a program that we're an affiliate of that that we also believe in. But it's not sponsors where you're just literally paid to talk about somebody else's stuff and and you don't even have to you know it's it can be about for example some you know dude wumps it's like do you even use those you know (laughs) no it doesn't matter because that's how typically advertising works right that it's more brand marketing where Mm -hmm. you've got a celebrity or somebody who's being paid there to hold your product and talk about it and to me i think well that's cool and it certainly still works it's not as honest and transparent as just the own, the promoter and, and creator of the product just talking about the product and saying, hey, we're going to entertain you about this topic. We're going to educate you about this topic. We're going to have some stuff for sale. And so that's what, what we're doing, right? Mm-hmm. And this is, this is good kind of example modeling for, for all of you to kind of understand that, that that's yes, that is also what we're doing on the show. It gives us an opportunity to be able to talk about some of these things. And, and, and at the same time, we teach them, we model them. We actually, oh my God, our, 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 um, we, we eat our own cooking here. We actually make money off of the thing that we teach, meaning that we don't teach you guys how to do Amazon drop shipping, as you were talking about, or print on demand while making all of our money from selling courses, coaching and doing events. Mm-hmm. If we, we actually eat our own cooking, but let's transition. Um, let's talk about YouTube. It's not something that a lot of people do. It's not something that a lot of people are, uh, still kind of in, it, 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 obsessed with everybody's obsessed with short form content. Everybody's obsessed with, um, uh, TikTok, Instagram reels, all that good stuff. Why are you on YouTube? Before we talk about some of the details, give us the higher 30,000 foot perspective of why you invest time in YouTube. Well, you know, I, let me take a step back. So I, I've spent a lot on my education over the years. You know, I'm constantly trying to grow as a, as not only a marketer, but also as a, as a creator on YouTube. And so I've worked with a lot of YouTube, you know, mentors and coaches and, and it's been a big part of helping me kind of grow. And, and one of my YouTube mentors, I'll never forget this. 
And kind of like we were saying before, you know, I've spent all this money on this YouTube education, but one, one little nugget I got from my coach is really the only thing I remember, but he was saying that YouTube is what's called a lean in experience. Okay. So for us older people, we actually had to sit around the TV at six o'clock at night to watch our favorite show. We couldn't just turn it on anytime we wanted to. So we'd have to get our snacks, sit down and turn on for six o'clock and watch our show. And that's what's called a lean in because we, you know, don't talk to me. I'm going to watch my show at six o'clock. YouTube is still is the same thing. When people go to YouTube, they're searching for something and they want to watch it. They want to get the answer. They want to get entertained. Right. So they're going to press play and they're going to watch. They're not thumbing through Instagram reels or TikTok. So the reason I am telling you that is because you're, you have an audience who is engaged. They're there for a reason. They're there to get their question answered and they're going. So they're typing in how to bake a cake, how to lose weight, right? How to set up my email automation or whatever it is. And if they come across my video or somebody else's video, they're going to press play and they're going to watch. So I'm not, I'm not catching people off guard on YouTube. They're coming to me, you know? Um, and so the leads for me, for the business side of things, it's, it's, it's crazy. The leads that I get coming from, coming from, um, YouTube, um, and the engagement. And that's why I've, that's why I really enjoy it because also you can, with the long form content in a way you can kind of skip a few steps with the, um, how do I want to say what's the, uh, what do they say? It's seven to 12 points of contact before somebody becomes a lead or whatever. I don't know who knows what it is. Yeah. I can build a little, I can build a deeper relationship with my five minute, eight minute, 10 minute video. Does that make sense? Then I can with a 60 second reel. So, yeah. And when I look at the numbers anyways, for me, the leads that the leads that I'll bring in from a YouTube video, it, it, um, far surpass what I'd ever bring in with my, with a TikTok or an Instagram for me, you know? And, and is that because of your particular talking style? Do you think, is that, is that because of your method of delivery? Do you think it, is it, is it just fit with your personality? I mean, why do you, why do you think that, that for you, uh, this particular route in investing time in YouTube in learning and all the things that you've been doing over the years, just committing to it. Why do you think that YouTube has been the best fit for you in the best use of your time? I mean, again, is it a yeah. personality thing? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it, um, is it nature? Is it nurture? Did you, did, you know, is it best for you because of who you are or, or is it something that you learned and you just ended up liking it most? Well, why do you think that is? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's because I've obviously as a, as a digital marketer and, you know, I, I'm always interested in what the new traffic source is, right? And as I should be. So if, if something's going on over on Instagram, I'm going to take a look. If something's going on on Pinterest, I'm going to take a look. Even though YouTube's my main, has always been my main platform, but I've, especially in this past year, I've kind of had to kick myself in the butt and say, I got to I can't, I got to keep my blinders on with my YouTube and I got to keep plugging because this is what's working for me just because this is working over there. doesn't on Instagram or wherever it means it's going to work for me, but I definitely think it's my personality that I've been successful on YouTube. I think, I think it's also because it takes me a little bit longer to get my, <laughs> my point across yeah. <laughs> so the, the long form video. Right. And I, and I personally, I like to give people more information. I like to have that longer form. It's easier for me. This may sound crazy, but it's easier for me 
to make a five to 10 minute video than it is to come up with an idea for a 60 second reel. Oh, uh, no, hundred percent. I, I totally get that. And you know what I mean? I, I totally get that. Yeah. I totally get that. So what, what are, I mean, obviously we're sharing your YouTube channel, but talk to us a little bit about, you know, you keeping the blinders on with YouTube. Like, what does that mean? How often are you, are you uploading? How much time is this taking you each day or each week? Where are you getting your video ideas from? Yeah, so I'm so typically in the beginning, I was putting out I was putting out like five videos a week. And that was just silliness, right? It's not doable, it's not possible, but that was when I was like, oh, more is better. I gotta get as much out there, more eyeballs, you know. And I was purely thinking uh, dollars. I was purely just thinking, I'm going to make as many videos as I can because I want to get monetized. I had no clue what I was doing, right? I wasn't looking at it from a business standpoint. I wasn't looking at it from building a community or building this kind of following or, or whatever. And now I've got it down to where I do one video a week. But I'm also at a point where I'm getting brand deals. So brands will reach out and I'll do one reg like a video that I want to do. And then I might do a video that more caters to their particular, it's usually software, um, that particular, that caters to their, uh, software program. Um, but I'm, you know, just like we were saying before, things change, things pivot. Um, I'm leaning, I'm actually going to start kicking up my workload a little bit because I'm working on doing more of a, of a funnel style video type series, if that makes sense. So where I would do three videos and one video might be a broader video. And then the second video might be more educational. And then the third video might be more speaking directly to my audience. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but right now, I've got it down to where I can, I can spend maybe three, four hours a day, not even to keep the channel going. That's actually probably on the high end. And I was talking mm. about, I was talking about this with Joanne earlier is again, I've been doing it for so long where I can come down into my studio here and I can record a video in 30 minutes. Mm. And then I send it to an editor and he does everything for me. The editing is the hardest part. Yeah. Because no you doubt. Get, organizing, yeah. organizing um, is, you know, keeping, keeping content organized in, in editing is definitely the hardest part. Um, but I want everybody to hear just what you're talking about. You're talking about three to four hours. Yeah. On the high side, that means on average, maybe two to three hours a day, five days a week ish to keep the channel just up and running. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It, it, so, yeah and well, go ahead. Sorry. Just, I mean, I'm just, there's a time commitment there. I just want to make sure everybody's clear about this. Like the way to build a business is not to get you're not going to get lucky you're not going to find the passive automation automated youtube machine where ai is going to make videos for you and and you're just you're actually going to have something that's worth a damn yeah you 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 might have a video get a few thousand views or something or but you i mean nowadays content's got to be good it's got to be it's got to be different it's one of the reasons why we've done this show for a le over 1100 interviews and episodes is because it's just different. It's good. It's been our lane. It's helped us with sales. It's helped us with just allowing customers to get to know who I am. We are. Do we know what we're talking about? Can we have impromptu unscripted conversations? Yeah, we've had over 1,100 of them, you mm -hmm. know, just, you know, damn near hour long. So, yeah, I just wanted people to hear that you were mentioning that there is a time commitment there. And I, it doesn't matter what you do. You want to be great at something yeah. or you want it to work. You just want it to work. Let's just put the greatness aside for a second. You just want it to work. Yeah. You need to mentally prepare yourself 
for that time commitment and that you're going to need to squeeze that in whatever your existing job hours are, Mm -hmm. or you're going to need to, if for some reason you're not working right now or whatever, that's the, that's the minimum of what you should be putting in on a daily basis. If you have all the time throughout your day to be able to dedicate. And, and it's, you know, the whole, the whole time thing, um, you know, you, it's a, for whatever reason, that's been a big, a big, uh, a big thing you see in content lately, you know, how many hours a day you only need or how many this you only need or whatever. And it might only take me two to three hours a day, but also you got to remember, I've been doing it seven years. So two to three, it, you know, I still think it's, it's, there's, it's still a lot less than any kind of nine to five, of course, but everybody's different and yeah. everybody's going to approach it differently. Um, also, you know, it depends on the kind of content you're making, you know, are you just doing top 10 lists where you're reading off a top 10 list? Are you doing a little bit more tutorial style videos? Like some of the videos I make could just be a top 10 list. And I can literally like have the top 10 lists in front of me where I'm just reading off my computer and then my editor will fix all that stuff later. You know, I could, I could pop off one of those videos in 15 minutes cause I'm good at it. I've been doing it for a while and then he'll, he'll make it look pretty. But I also, I also had to spend an hour or two just to research that 10 minute video. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is yeah. your editor somebody who is a, a uh, working for you from another country? They're a virtual yes. assistant. Did you find them on Fiverr, freelancer? When, when did you hire them? And did you learn editing before or just let them edit everything and you never edited anything? That's a great, that, that's a great question. Um, and this actually is a little bit of advice. If you decide to go YouTube, which I highly recommend, it is a powerful, powerful, uh, tool, um, is you got to edit your own videos in the beginning. Um, one, because there's going to come a time where you're going to send your video to your editor and he's going to be like, Oh, sorry, I'm out of town or Hey, I can't get to it or whatever. Um, Mm. and you're going to have to edit or you're going to get, you're going to have something that's due the next morning because I stick to a certain time frame on YouTube. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. And that's my own. Although I could post a video at three in the morning, nobody's going to care, but I care. Mm -hmm. And my audience knows it's coming out at 9 a.m. So that's the deadline I set for myself. But also the reason I think it's important that you learn how to edit, not only is it a valuable craft for you and you'll use it the rest of your life, but you're going to start. And it's going to be, it's weird in the beginning, listening to yourself speak. um, But you're going to learn how to like, make these different edits and these different cuts to make that kind of that video stand out more. Mm. But over time, as you do that, it's going to make you a better speaker as well, which is then going to save you more time, which is then going to cost you less money for the editors. It makes sense. Mm. So all this stuff. And now when you send a, a, a video to the editor, you know what you're talking about when you say, Hey, I want you to add B roll at this point. I want you to cut it when I say this, and I want you to put this text when I say that. Yeah. So, and it doesn't, and, and, and if, and if you're sitting there guys watching right now going, Oh my God, I have no idea. (laughs) This, this isn't rocket science. Yeah. And and I want to say that I've had a video editor that I've worked with for, you know, five years. And I, we've, I think we've, We've spoke on the phone one time that includes Zooms. I mean, we just literally work off of email and work off of a Google document where either the script or parts of the script or bullet points of what I talked about are in the Google doc. And if I want a particular video or photo inserted into the, into the video at that time, I'll, I'll link on the Google doc out to that particular video or that clip or whatever it is. So he can pretty much just go, you know, I got the full, you know, full clip from that was recorded on the, on the document or linked out from the Google doc. I got information about what's in the video or the entire script. And if I have the entire script there, if I link, if I, if I have a video or a clip that I want inserted a piece of media, anytime 
I just I just link out from that Google Doc. So it's all I do is send him just one Google Doc whenever I need a video edited, and it's all just organized. Part of that is on me, though. What I realized about managing video editors and about getting the product that I want to get back, because an editor can make or break your video. Mm -hmm. I mean, your edit can make or break your video, you mm -hmm. know. And so for me, I needed to get good at being clear about what I wanted, the types of edits that I wanted. And again, that's why I went to that one page Google document was because if I created within Google a folder within that folder, I could drop all the assets that I wanted in, to be included in that video. For example, all the B-roll or all the photos. Um, or any other examples, of, mm -hmm. of course. And he has the freedom to be creative, to find examples or do graphics for areas that I didn't, don't have a photo or specific B-roll that I want put in. Um, but, and most of the time at this point, he chooses all of that. But if I have a specific p video that I want put in at the video, I will, I will link it out and, and describe it on that Google Doc. So again, I'm sending him something on that Google Doc that's so clear about the edits that I want and where specifically I want them. Or yeah. it, it's just, it works. And again, managing anybody, whether it's going to be a video editor, or whether it's going to be anybody else in your business, you know, especially the part of the beauty of the internet is that you get to do all this stuff from your phone. Mm -hmm. For example, I use an app called Slack to, 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 you know, to, to interact in kind of it's our virtual office. And I mean, we run an entire company, an entire office out of this one app. It's like a, it's like an internal, you know, mm -hmm. office app where you have all, you can either communicate one-on-one -on -one to people or you can create, communicate within channels. And I mean, run our whole ent entire organization off of that, but it's all about clear communication. It's yeah. all about being very clear about what you want. And in terms of getting back a, a, a an awesome product from edit, from, we call it post, right? Post production, what happens after it's filmed. You get something back in post that's really high quality. A lot of that depends on the planning and the preparation and the clarity that, of whatever instructions you gave your editor. And mm -hmm. if you put a little bit more time into that on the front end, you'll get a better product back. You'll get more of what you want, closer to what you want mm -hmm. on the back end. That's been my experience. Yeah, that's a good point. Is the <clears throat> is the uh, the the work you do before the edit, the the taking the time now to tell them what you want. And I use the same thing. I use a Google Sheet. I highlight certain things, which is which is another thing that's really crazy is that we can simply use a free tool like Google Sheets <laughs> to run our business. And I use you had asked me before, but I use Upwork to find mm. my editors and yeah. Okay. And this is just a little tip for you guys. Um, maybe this will help if you're doing YouTube or going YouTube is I would look when I started, I looked at, and I still do this now I'll kind of browse through, but I'll look at the editors and they all have their portfolios of the work that they've done. And, you know, you really want to find an editor who understands YouTube editing because it's one thing to find somebody who just edited their brother-in-law's wedding video. People who are real, like, like, like Dave said, a good edit can make or break your video. It can be the difference between a hundred views and a million views. And I'm not even joking. Like the, cause the whole point uh, uh, of the, of having a good editor is for them to, to keep the viewers attention, right? Cause YouTube wants to keep you on, YouTube. They want you to stay on and watch the videos. But with these YouTube editors on a place like Upwork, which is free, you guys can go there, is you could literally send them a video and say, hey, uh, could you, you know, do this first video for me? I want to, I want to try you out. And you offer to just pay them like a flat sum, like 20 bucks, literally 20 bucks, because they just want to get the work. And that's what I did. I, I sent just, the same just to see their work, right? Yeah. I sent the same video to like five editors and I ended up with this guy. I've had the same guy for three or four years. Yeah, he's, good a, idea. he's a student in Turkey um, and he knows how I want things. But, but the point I'm trying to get is that 
there's you want to make sure that the editors understand what it's what it takes to edit for YouTube. Yeah. Cuz it's a big difference between editing a music video or something, right? Yeah. No, that's great advice. And a lot more tips and nuggets coming your way in Austin when you're going to meet Judd, those of you who are coming to our mastermind in Austin. Uh, and of course, go check out his YouTube at Judd Albring. Uh, my friend, great to connect, brother. Great to catch up. Thank you. Love talk and shop with you, man. Um, so I loved your story. Learn more about you today, too. Uh, not sure that I knew that you had that luxury high-end sales experience. That's really cool. Yeah, if you need um, a suit, let me know. Yeah, man. No, I just got a couple of custom suits made. A, a buddy of mine had a guy come over. Uh, who he knew and and he did this big custom tailoring job for a bunch of our friends and we just got him three suits each uh, nothing like a tailored suit brother. right nothing like a custom tailored suit it's quite something but um anyways we'll chat more soon can't wait to see you in austin and can't wait for everybody to meet you or re meet you in austin texas here at your next speaking engagement with us for sure missionary marketer mastermind in austin texas judd i'll bring Talk to you soon, brother. Stay Thank you. Here. Bye, everyone. All right. All right, my friends. You can find Judd over at Judd Albring, A-L-B-R-I-N-G, Judd Albring, over on YouTube. And my friends, uh, there it is. Uh, if you want to get started with any of our programs, our you know five-day challenge where you can learn to launch and to become a leader in your business, in a digital marketing business, Utilizing the core four business models that we teach of selling information online, courses, coaching, events, or doing affiliate marketing. The core four. Go learn about them. It's a short, uh, impactful, powerful, exciting challenge called the five-day learn, launch, lead challenge. You can also enroll in our blueprints, which are our more advanced flagship coaching program. You can come to an event, which we talked about, a mastermind. Our next one's going to be held in Austin, Texas in January. Get all of that information at legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. And I hope to meet those of you who are or thinking about coming in Austin. Hope to meet you all. But looking forward to meeting those of you who are coming in Austin. It's always a party. It's a movie. It's a blast. It's, it's, you got to experience it. If you know, you know. Uh, and once you come, it's addicting to be in that environment and to want to continue to keep coming back and, uh, you know, just grow and be around the quality and caliber of people that are you're going to experience and meet and see inside of that room. So anyways, my friends, all of th those types of people are here within this community, which is what makes it so exciting for me. All ballers, all motivated people, all people who want more out of life, all people who are successful in maybe one area now want to be successful in another, want to expand their income, want to make more money, want to transition even their career to doing something new. We got it all, and we love you all, and we appreciate you. Thanks for the support for us and our guest in the comments. All the love for Judd today. Appreciate that. These guests come on. Remember, this is free. This is impromptu. The show is all about just showcasing and lifting up and, and giving our clients or our speakers or our affiliates a platform to be able to share their knowledge, their expertise, their brand. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. My friends, have a great day. Be legendary. Get out of here. Peace.